<laughs> hey guys, I'm Chris. And I'm Sam. And we're back with your gearheads. Today, we're gonna give you guys a rundown of upcoming snowboards that are hitting the market this season uh, to get you out on the slopes. We're gonna cover what categories? All mountain, free ride, powder, park, and beginner. So within these categories, we're gonna give you a run through of our top pick for the season, high level tech specs and details about each one, and then kind of who's it for and give a rundown to the consumer. With YouTube, you can do chapters. So if you're looking and you're here for a specific board, scroll ahead. Also, we're gonna be doing some more comprehensive videos on skis, on split boards, on avalanche gear. So make sure you check out the full channel and get the run through of kind of all of our top gear for this upcoming snow season in general. And leave a comment below what you'd like us to talk about for our upcoming split board video. And we'll be sure to do that. Let's get this winter started. Yeah, let's do it. So first, Sam, we've got the Yes Pizel all mountain board. Tell us about this thing. Personally, Yes is one of my favorite brands. Yeah. Owned by the legendary DCP, Roman DeMarchi, JP Solberg. This is a collab with uh, Pizel Surfboards. This is a board that I'm extremely excited about. From the start here, you can see this side cut has kind of like a almost rectangular taper to it. Yeah. Is that designed to kind of give it a surf inspired element or what's that for? It is. I mean, a rail on a surfboard is a, a very um, important aspect of turning. And Yes refers to this as their tapered mid bite side cut. So under your feet, under the insert packs, it's going to be uh, wider um, and narrower in between for uh, quicker edge to edge um, and control of the board. We've got a pretty healthy amount of camber. That precision and that snap is really going to make this a lively board. Seems like kind of that directional twin has been common in the all mountain yeah. zone. I mean, that gives you the ability to ride switch, but primarily you're looking to go all over the place, charge through variable terrain in this board. Absolutely. So this board is center in stance, but going back to that tapered mid bite side cut, and we do have a little bit of taper. So it goes in four millimeters up here and then two millimeters in the back. You know, you got a little less tail width than you do in the nose. All mountain um, directional twin boards, you know, they're meant to be riding on any day. And a big feature with this board for those deeper days is gonna be your slam back inserts. So that really allows you to throw your bindings back way more to get even better float. Cool, so it's like an all mountain board with a little bit of a powder twist to it. Yeah, I think this person uh, riding this board, you know, you're gonna wanna prioritize some softer snow but even on corduroy, you're set up to, to really carve it up. On to the next free ride. This is a classic T. Ricky special <laughs> right here. Sure is. Sam, tell us about the Slip Tech. Uh, the T-Rise Pro. Um, it's actually really nice how it's been a consistent model in Lib Tech's lineup. And a lot of that is because of Travis and you know his input into this board. Uh, we've got a, a healthy amount of rocker in between your feet. And, and that's going to definitely cater to additional float and deeper snow. But as you're waiting and getting the board on edge, that effective edge, especially with the magna traction, which is that serrated butter knife, multiple contact points throughout the, the side cut there. It's gonna hold an edge really well. And I think part of what makes this an incredible free ride, backcountry freestyle board is the amount of edge that you have on the snow. Well, let's talk about stiffness too, because I think that's a really important characteristic to talk about as we move from all mountain. All mountain, you want stability and stiffness so you can kind of carve on those maybe less ideal conditions, but mm -hmm. still also have a little bit of softness to play around and pop through snow or if you're jibbing in the park. But for a free ride board, where does this thing land in terms of stiffness and what are you kind of looking for? Obviously, we've all seen how Travis rides. Right. He, he needs something pretty solid under his feet. And that's what makes this board a little unique too. It's a free ride board, but with Travis's riding style, it's got a lot of freestyle characteristics. Mm -hmm. You know, for those that are doing freestyle maneuvers in the backcountry. This is a true twin. It's a twin flex. It's gonna be rather supportive for sure, but you do have some torsional flex so you can really manipulate, you know, if you're trying to make a turn pretty quickly. Who's this board for? I mean, obviously we've talked about free riding in big mountains, but where are you taking this thing? What conditions are you bringing this board out in? Who's looking to buy this board? You know, if you're a snowboarder that likes to chase 
storms, um, or if you have a Epic Pass or Icon Pass and you're really getting around, this is truly one board that was technically designed in Jackson Hole, but you could show up to any resort in the US and it's gonna hold up. Yeah, it also looks like a good board maybe for that person going on a, on a lodge trip, maybe cat skiing mm -hmm. or heli skiing. Moving on from free ride and a good transition into kind of those bigger mountains and fresher lines, mm -hmm. let's talk about POW. One of our favorite subjects here in Utah with coming off the season that we had, when we look at our POW categories, we're really looking for boards that are there for you on the deep days. We have a lot of those around here. Especially last year. Yeah. I think it's gonna happen again. Tell us about this board. You, you spent a lot of time on this board. I do own this board. We're looking at the K2 Excavator. This is part of the K2 Landscape series. What I love about this board is that it is volume shifted. So that means you wanna be riding this thing between four to six centimeters shorter than you would a normal board. Mm -hmm. And they make up that surface area within the width of the board. So whereas I typically ride a 159, 160, um, I'd be right at home on this 154. There's a playfulness that's really, really fun, even in deep snow. So with that added width, uh, pretty cool tip and tail design, you obviously have a big spoon up front to mm -hmm. keep you floating in the pow, a lot of volume up here. And then uh, what's the tail construction here? So with the tail, the effective edge and the contact point is gonna be way back here. Mm -hmm. You've got a little bit of rocker, but not very much in relation to that nose. They also put, uh, extra carbon in the tail. So if you're in that soft snow, you're taking a steeper line, you can really push that back foot into the snow um, and get massive amounts of control really quickly. And this board is uh, directional camber. Obviously, majority of the time in POW, you're gonna be just looking to cruise forward, get good slashes, have good control. Yeah, I mean, we're looking at 20 millimeters of taper. And, and this board isn't just for, for powder. This is, you know, part of its name is also for digging trenches on corduroy early morning laps. You know, some of that taper, though it helps for the float, it also helps initiate that carve on harder snow. Probably not the best for riding switch. Um, could it be done? Yeah. So with that and this being kind of a POW-centric board that can carve well, um, tell us about the camber in this board, the profile, and why it seems like there's a good amount of camber for a POW board. There is, um, and, and it's a directional camber, meaning that most of that is gonna be a little bit farther back. As you compress that camber, you know, you're gonna lift that, that rocker in the nose, um, and due to the width, you're gonna get all the float you need. But the, the aspect of the camber, you know, it, it really gives the ability to pop the efficiency, the feedback. It's a pretty lively board. I, I think it's definitely catered more towards intermediates, experts than say beginners. Cool. So who's this board for? You know, for me, you've got your all mountain directional board. This is a fantastic next board to build that quiver. Again, whether that's corduroy or powder, it's such a fun, you know, N plus one board. One thing I'll note is K2 has kept it right kind of in my style for graphics. I feel like I yeah. like something a little bit more understated, but still has like a little bit of character to it. On to the old, <laughs> the old heritage. The battalion. Yeah, so this is going to be our uh, top pick for freestyle and park riding. We've got the battalion evil twin. As you can see, I think they're making it very clear to identify that this is a true twin in shape, spelled out by the graphics. Yeah. I would say that this model, the evil twin, really put battalion on the map, and this board specifically has a bit of a cult following. One thing that's really special about this deck um, for how much it excels within the terrain park. It's also a really good all mountain resort board. You do have a nice healthy amount of camber that's very centered within the deck with a, a mid flex, which is gonna be good for pressing, buttering, um, landing on the jumps. And what's really unique about Battalion and this board in general is their 3BT technology, which is triple base. So triple base technology, um, we've got a flat section, and this is mimicked in the nose as it is the tail. You got a flat section in the middle underneath, and then the contact points are actually lifted. That's gonna make a very catch-free, um, easy turn initiation, and hard to get hung up on rails as well. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You see that in the ski industry on tips and tails on a lot of POW skis. Right. It's pretty unique to see it in more of a freestyle, all-mountain board. Yeah. 
I'd also have to comment on the weight of this board in particular. It's, uh, you know, I think if you're doing some spins, the swing weight is going to be good. Nice. So you kind of touched on it, but who's this board for? So this board is for the snowboarder that likes to spend a lot of time in the park, but it's also, you know, sometimes you gotta get to the park and end after. Right, um, and you, you got just, side hits to hit, you did, groomers yeah. to carve, knolls yeah. to jump off of. 100%. So kind of your playful all mountain with majority being kind of freestyle focused. Exactly. Cool, so this is Arbor's take, uh, the Arbor Foundation on a beginner board and our top pick for the year in the beginner category. And this board looks like it's packed full of really cool technologies. Obviously off the bat, got some reverse camera going on, their grip tech technology. Let's hear about it, Sam. The rocker, there's, there's really no camber to speak of here. That's gonna make this board very approachable. It's gonna have a, a surfy feeling. You know, with your contact points off of the snow, um, it's gonna be hard to Catch to an edge. Catch an edge. To date, it's been pretty uncommon that you get a side cut technology on a beginner board. Yeah. Arbor refers to this as their grip tech, which is just two more pressure points within the side cut. Whether it's hard pack conditions, especially being a rockered board, you're still gonna get really good edge hold. So I think edge hold can be a little bit spooky as a beginner boarder. You know, you are learning how to switch from edge to edge and once you get a good toe side and all of a sudden you're locked in, do you think that kind of effective edge on the toe and the heel kind of help you not feel as locked in while still the grip tech is giving you that bit of control and yeah. knifing that you need or, or how would you kind of describe that feeling? As a rider progressing, you know, heel side and toe side turns, you're, you're just gonna have all the confidence to lock those together and progress a lot quicker on a board like this than some say something that has boatloads of camber. Sticking with tradition, who's this board for? Um, so this is for the rider that's progressing still and they're snowboarding. I think one thing that's really neat is as that rider progresses, this could totally become your park board. The rocker is gonna pay dividends in the park. It's got a really nice forgiving flex. As you start to progress, get a, you know, one of our other all mountain boards, but you could keep this in your quiver for sure. Speaking of quivers, Sam, I've been in your garage. Mm -hmm. Clearly you like snowboarding. Correct. Out of all these boards, what are you bringing home with you this year? I'm gonna have to go with the Yes Paisel. The side cut, the camber, the versatility of that snowboard, it, it's right up my alley. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Like and subscribe and keep an eye out for more videos like this. And hit us in the comments, what board are you taking home? Where would you ride these boards? I mean, we have a good mix of kind of your all mountain, your full on pow slayer, your big mountain free ride board, down to your park and beginner picks from our gearheads here at Backcountry. We'll see you guys on the slopes this winter and tune in for more upcoming snowboard content. Thanks guys. Thank you.